Hello and welcome to this short video on how to process EdgeTech 6205 bathymetric and side scan data using SonarWiz. Just like every other project in SonarWiz, the first thing you're going to want to do is create a new project. Clicking the New Project button will give our project a name. I'll call it ET6205 Training. If you know the vessel uh, parameters, you can set it up here. I'm going to skip past this part right now just because I want this to be an introductory video of, of how to get started. To set the approximate position for your project, you can just simply read one of the JSF files and the software will extract the approximate latitude and longitude from those files. If you leave the coordinate system at automatic, SonarWiz will choose the correct UTM zone for you. Okay, I press OK and that will create a blank empty project for me. The first step then to importing BATHY data is to use the post-processing import button and the type of file we want to import is bathymetry files and SonarWiz can read directly almost all of the common bathymetry formats so in this case since we're working with an edge tag system we want to process the JSF files and we need to tell SonarWiz what type of bathymetric sonar we're working with so we have a bathymetric uh, profile dialog that allows you to choose from various manufacturers uh, bathymetric systems and this is an edge tech 6205 uh, and the data has been bin by the edge tech uh, discover software that's really all I need to do I just need to choose those four files and press the open button this next step then extracts the navigation the attitude and the raw range and angle data from those four JSF files and plots that navigation in the plan view of SonarWiz I can see that it's added the four JSF files here in my bathymetric control and if I right click on the properties I can get the uh, information about each individual file so how many raw records we have how much time is elapsed during the course of this file and so on then to turn these raw data points of raw range and angle attitude and navigation to turn that into bathymetric XYZ all we need to do is select those files right click and say merge the merge operation takes the attitude and the uh, navigation and the raw range and angle and combines that to make XYZ. So now in our plan view what we've drawn is the first cut unprocessed just raw data points. In fact you can see these are raw data points if you zoom in you can see that we've got individual XYZ points drawn into the plan view. So this is where you sort of begin your editing process in SonarWiz. Uh, one of the first things you're going to want to do is probably examine these points in 3D to see well how do they look and so there's a 3D area editor in SonarWiz and that's the, these toolbar buttons here at the top allow you to get into the editor so I can come in and select an area a graphical area I want to edit and what this does it'll open up the 3D editor let me move it over here so you can see it and this 3D editor has two sections on the left hand side it's a 3D visualization of those raw data points and on the right hand side is a 2D representation of those same data points. The 2D view allows you to have different projections so I can look at this in plan view if I want with the XY projection or XZ or YZ. So you can turn the data different ways to to examine it. Now typically what you want to do is look for outliers or flyers in this sort of data set and I'm not really seeing much here. I can exaggerate the z-axis to sort of highlight sort of noise or errors but I don't see any any flyers in this particular selection. So I'll minimize that and go back and select another area in SonarWiz if I want to manually go through this. A helpful aid uh, in this process is to turn on what we call the selection areas. This is a uh, the rectangle or the polygon that we previously looked at so this just kind of tells you where you've been in the file so if you want to go back and revisit that area after editing it's a nice way of knowing where you've been you don't have to use sort of axis aligned rectangles either you can use this other option for the editor and draw a polygon around the area that you want to see and so I could do something like this just as a demonstration right click to close that polygon and then the editor will load up with that kind of crazy shaped polygon there again you can edit in either side of this uh, of this view and I see I've got a few points over here that that look suspect here so if I wanted to get rid of those points I can do it in either view I can I can edit them in the 3d view or in the 2d side to edit in the 3D view, I choose a selection method. So my selection methods are rectangle, polygon, or lasso. 
If I use the rectangle, all I do is grab the shift key and drag a box around the points that I want to reject. In the rejection mode, I've got three selections. I always use auto reject, and that means when I select something, it means I want to flag it for deletion. If you make a mistake or you change your mind, you can use undo, and it'll put those points back in, or redo, and it'll take the points back out. When I edit here in, inside this editor, it also immediately affects what's shown in the plan view of SonarWiz. So now let's pick another area and we'll finish the, the manual editing of this, this project. And again, what I'm looking for here are outliers, points that look suspect that probably are either errors in the, in the, the uh, body data or some sort of noise. This doesn't look too bad here. Uh, I'm just going to let that be. Go back to SonarWiz and grab this last section over here. And here I've got definitely got some points over here that look like they are outliers. So I'll use the selection tool to remove them. And you can see that the as soon as I pull those out, the scale readjusts uh, very nicely. Okay, so now I've been through and I've edited almost all of the data. I think I probably missed this little section right in the middle here. Let's go back and pull that in. Uh, this is on the side of that barge. Yeah, I mean, there's a few points at the top here. You might you might want to get rid of those just to clean things up a bit, but overall it looks pretty good. Okay, so that's the editing process, and there are automatic editing tools here. We've got median filter, density filter, and min-max filter, and those are also very powerful tools but I'll leave those alone for this sort of simple introduction. Okay, so now what I want to do is uh, I want to make a, a grid from this, this data. I want to make a surface out of it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll turn off the value selections. I don't think we need that on anymore. And what I'll do is under the post processing tab, choose the option that says bathymetry exports, export value grid file. So this is our gridding tool. So this grids is raw XYZ points into a surface. You can choose the cell size, so one meter, half meter, whatever you like. You can use the extrapolation method, so if you've got small holes in between where you don't have any data, it will extrapolate between those holes and fill them in for you. And then finally at the bottom here it says, what do you want to do when the gridding process is complete? So we can add that grid as a base map. Actually, let's do that, and we'll also add, uh, open this grid in the 3D viewer. So let's kick that off. That's a background process, and so down here on the toolbar, or the status bar, I'm not sure if you can see this or not in the video, but it shows me a little progress uh, icon here uh, of where that gridding process is. And so when it's finished, it will execute the instructions that I gave it. So the first thing we see here is that we've got, we have now a gridded surface of those, those barges showing the bathymetry of the surrounding area, and that's been opened in our 3D view. Now back in the SonarWiz plan view, I also notice now that I've got an entry in the map section because I told the software to load up that grid file as a base map when it finished. So now if I turn off my bathymetry files, you notice I still have this gridded bathymetry in the background. So this is the 50 centimeter gridded data that we, that we brought in as a base map. We'll turn that off and go back to looking on our, our raw bathymetry points and that's what we've got. Okay, now how do we merge the side scan data with this bathymetry? Let's go ahead and import again, but this time instead of bringing in the bathymetry files, we'll read those four JSF files, but we're going to extract their side scan. The 6205 is a dual frequency system, so we could either read in the uh, channels 1 and 2, which would be the low frequency, or channels 3 and 4, which would be the high frequency. I'm going to bring it, read in the low frequency data here. We can bring them both in if you like. So that's going to read in those four JSF side scan files, and it'll plop those down in the plan view um, just where they fit. And you can see it doesn't look like the bottom tracking is, has been done very well, so let's go in and look at that real quick. The bottom tracking, it's not bad, but it's sitting just above the bottom, which is leaving this sort of dark nadir area in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and retrack that file, adjust our tracking parameters. That looks a little better. I'll save that file and load the next one, repeat the process, save and next again, track it, 
save and next one more time and track that. We've got a little part here where the, uh, the tracker didn't, didn't like going over that spot there at the end of the barge. We can clean that up by manually tracking over that edge. Use the right mouse button to erase points and the left mouse button then to go in and insert over that edited section. Okay, so those are my four JSF files, and what I want to do now is I want to make a surface from these files and merge that with the bathymetric data. Just real quick here, that we have a few options for how to handle the overlapping area here. So we've got four files, they're almost all right on top of each other. In the side scan overlap mode, we've got what's called cover up, which is the mode we're in now, where the last file drawn covers up all the files underneath of it. Then we've got average, shine through, and root mean square, which these are just different methods of combining the data. So it blends the data together using the different statistical function to, to do the blending. So if we wanted to, we could, we could play around with that, or we could change the order. We could click on a line and say, um, in cover-up mode, we could say send to back or bring to front. So you can kind of poke the lines forward or, or backward in the stack of, of sonar files. Okay, let's go ahead and save this side scan mosaic as a GeoTIFF image and I'll just do it at 50 centimeters. I'll take the default name and I'll tell SonarWiz to launch the viewer after saving. That just means let me take a quick look at what you did. So that's really not very high resolution. Let's make that a little bit higher. Let's do 25 centimeters. And we'll overwrite the other file. So that's a little bit better, a little bit higher resolution data. Okay, so now with uh, the GeoTIFF made and the, the grid surface made, we can use the export to 3D viewer to combine those two uh, images into one. So the first thing it wants to know is, okay, what's the name of the grid file? And the grid file will be stored in your the root of your project folder. And that's this grid file, the only grid file here in, our, in my project folder. And then it wants a georeferenced image file. So that's going to be the GeoTIFF that we just made and the GeoTIFFs are always stored in the GeoTIFF folder. So now I've got the two parts I need. I've got the, the GeoTIFF and the grid. And what I want to do is have the 3D view now display both of those images together. So what I've got is a kind of a 3D side scan mosaic now where I can see the relief on those barges with the side scan data draped over top of it. So it's pretty quick to get a, uh, a 3D side scan mosaic with the bathymetry and side scan combined. That concludes this first kind of quick look at how to merge and how to process EdgeTech 6205 uh, side scan data.